Joining BYU Sports Nation now, former NBA player and BYU basketball great Travis Hansen. Travis, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Thanks, fellas. Thanks for having me on this morning. You bet. How did you feel about BYU being seated as an 11 and the play-in game? Just what, were you, what was your initial reaction to the news? Initial reaction, uh, last night I was in St. George at my dad's house watching it, texting Terry Nash back and forth, and uh, – <laughs> And, I, you know, I thought it was a joke at first. I mean, you know, they treated Indiana and Texas and even UCF, UCLA extremely well, uh, I think a little too well, or, you know. And uh, and a little disrespectful towards BYU, especially how they played the last, you know, few weeks and that big win at Gonzaga. But, you know, in the end, actually, I think it's a, I think it's a way better spot for them. You know, they don't have to wait very long. They get to play right away. And, and the first two games are super winnable games for them. Where do you think BYU should have been seated? You know, at least, you know, uh, with Indiana, Texas, and, and UCLA, where they were seated at least at 8 or 9 or 10, right? I mean, I, I was guessing a 10, you know, maybe even 11 the, the whole time. But, you know, as soon as Indiana and Texas got their seeds, I thought, man, BYU has a better record than them. Um, I think they're a better team. I think, I think they're fun to watch. Uh, so I thought, I thought they'd get a 9. Travis Hansen with us on BYU Sports Nation, 2003 Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year, 44-1 and in his career at the Marriott Center. BYU now heads to Dayton, Ohio. It is a quick turnaround, Travis. And in your conversations with Terry and, and whoever else you've been talking to on the staff, how do they feel about the logistics of uh, turning this thing around and going to playing tomorrow night? I think they're very positive. I think they'd love it. I mean, they, they flew out to Dayton this morning. Um, they play tomorrow night, so it's a quick turnaround. It's really hard uh, to play, you know, on a Thursday or Friday um, because there's, there's so much lead up into the game, the, the media, publicity. You got to practice. Your body kind of gets out of the rhythm. It's nice as an athlete not to not to think too much about all that and not to have too much distraction. So I think they're incredibly um, excited about Dayton, and then it's only an hour and a half charter to, to Florida, and so. So I think, I think the logistics work really well for, uh, for BYU. Travis, what's your expectation of this BYU team in the NCAA tournament? Oh, to win the game. My gosh, I think they're better than Ole Miss. I think, I think they actually kind of mirror each other in style of play. Uh, Ole Miss is you know, extremely athletic, a little bit more athletic than BYU, but the BYU's IQ and, uh, and, and, and the, the players they have on how they know how to play the game the right way is, I think, uh, you know, two or three times as, as good as Ole Miss. And so I think it's going to be an incredible game, but, you know, I expect BYU to go out there and be super aggressive, confident, and, and win that game and look forward to Xavier. Do you think BYU has a shot? There's discussion of uh, possibly Sweet 16, getting a couple of wins. It'd have to be three this week. Yeah, I mean, everyone's got to play really well. You know, that's kind of the the uh, the hard thing with playing team sports is, you know, the reason they won at Gonzaga was it was really the first time all season long where they had, you know, seven, eight, nine players come and play their, their A-plus game. I mean, Halford was, was killing it. Collinsworth was doing exactly what he should be doing every game. Kafusi, as a freshman, was showing, you know, amazing signs of being an incredible um, uh, pillar for the, for the program here in the future. And so everyone that kind of but Tyler – uh, had a great game, and they, and they need that, especially in the NCAA tournament when you play the top teams in the nation. Everybody's got to come to play. Everyone's got to be have an on night. And uh, if that happens, yeah, absolutely, they have they have multiple chances to go go deep within the tourney. Follow him on Twitter at Travis Hansen twenty four, former BYU guard Travis Hansen joining BYU Sports Nation. When you look at defining success in a season, Travis. Does it come down to winning in the NCAA tournament for BYU to term this as a success? Uh, I think just getting in the tournament is a, is a huge success. You know, it's a, you have the opportunity to play for a national championship. How cool is that? And, and with all their ups and downs and their injuries, I think I think it's been a tremendously successful season. Um, I, and I think that that's a hard question because it depends on the, the program, it depends on the coach. Um, I think getting a group of guys to mold and play the right way, uh, that alone uh, will help you grow in the future and, and expand in the future. But, I mean, just getting guys to, you know, play basketball the right way. I always tell my kids that we coach, we say, you know, we're on a mission to get rid of bad basketball. 
we want to pass the ball. We want to we want to we want to cut. We want to make open shots. We want to play aggressive. And and I think BYU's been super up and down all season with with those things until the last three weeks. And that's where you know it's been really exciting and fun to watch them because they played they played basketball the right way. And so I think it's been a success already. With the Kyle Collinsworth injury and last year's NCAA tournament game aside, is this better? Is this team better equipped to win a game in the NCAA tournament than last year's team? You know, probably the way they're playing. I think their confidence is is at, at a sky high, and you know, I got to I got to give credit to Coach Rose. I played for so many good coaches. You know, David Blatt, who coached the Cavs, Messina, who's probably going to end up taking over for Popovich at the Spurs. Um, Rose is just you know, one of the best coaches I've ever seen. I mean, I, and I don't even know how to describe how good he is because there's so many factors and variables and attributes you can talk about, but the way he gets guys to believe they're better than they are, the way he he motivates a, a team to play together and believe in each other and trust each other is is amazing. And so uh, I, think, I think this group has really bought into that, and so that's why I would say this group's definitely uh, better and more confident than last year. Travis, you've been in a similar situation with the BYU team on the bubble. I, I go back to 2003 specifically when you were a 12 seed against UConn. What's it like seeing your team's name on the screen and hearing BYU when you're on the bubble on Selection Sunday? It's a relief, really. There's so much pressure to, to make it to the NCAA tournament. Uh, that's that's your you know one of your main team goals all season long, and that's what you've been battling for is to – to build your profile up enough and have enough good wins and, and, a, and, a, and a solid record and RPI so you can get into the tournament. So it's a relief. It's a relief. And then after that, you're super excited. You just want to go and see how good you are and how good you can play. And, and then you get a chance to play against, you know, nationally recognized programs like UConn and go in there and give your all. I mean, I think we should have beat UConn. I think we were a better team and, and we just, you know, a few different things could have happened, uh, to go our way we could have won that game easily Travis how do you not let the moment overwhelm you when you get to the NCAA tournament and that ball is tipped you know that's a hard thing to do uh, uh, mentally you got to be just tough as nails I you know even going in to Atlanta Hawks and playing you know I started against Kobe Bryant played the Lakers here in LA um, and then playing overseas you know when I when I would get a little bit uh, full of anxiety or stress I, I would just mentally, I would go back to like the stake center or the Marriott center where I feel most comfortable. And I would just imagine I was there. I was imagine I was just me and, you know, uh, Cleveland and Rose and, and Trent Whiting. And we were just rebounding and shooting together. And it would just, you know, if you can calm yourself and, uh, and not get too ups and up and down with your, with your stress levels, that definitely helps. And just pretend because really, you know, I, I go back and play against these ACC, SEC, you know, SEC guys and play against Jason Terry and all these guys are phenomenal players, and they're really not that much better than than us. I mean, how many how many people are better than Tyler Hawes or or Kyle Collinsworth, let alone in the nation or the world? Very, very, very few players. Those two are uh, unbelievably talented. I would put Tyler Hawes on the Duke team, and he would fit right in and, and be scoring 18 points a game. And so these guys have got to believe that and believe that they're just as good as an ACC or Big 12 or SEC player because they are. You know, I'd go and they'd come off a pick and shoot a jumper and it was like hard against the backboard. And then you'd do a fast break and they'd do a 360. And I thought, man, you know, they're <laughs> athletic, but, but the guy doesn't know how to come off a pick and shoot a jumper. And so, so our guys are just as good as them. They just need to come together at the right time and believe in themselves. They'll have a lot of success. Travis, we're going to package all of this up and send it out to BYU as like a pregame motivation speech. Are you cool with that? Let's do it. Let's do it. You know, one of the jobs I always wanted to go for is, you know, when you go to war, like Braveheart, and you're, you're set up and, you know, everyone's got their face paint on and their swords and they're ready to go. I always wanted to be the guy on the horse holding the flag <laughs> and, just, and just ride along, ride along in front, just screaming as loud as I can. I am William Wallace. Up. Yes, yes, that's uh, my... That's my dream job. That is outstanding. <laughs> we'll try and make that happen at some point in the future, Travis. That'd be phenomenal. That'd be awesome. <laughs> hey, great to talk to you. We appreciate the time and uh, the insight. Let's go, BYU. Let's do this. Thanks, guys.